The Canopus Decree Introduction The Canopus Decree dates from 238 BC during the Ptolemaic era of the pharaoh Ptolemaeus, Ptolemy III, Eucharetis, from 246 to 221 BCE. This is one of the earliest of the series of Ptolemaic decrees which date to the reign of King Ptolemy III from the Ptolemaic period. In 1866, Carl Richard Lepsius discovered at Tanis the first copy of this decree. Another copy was found in 1881 by Gaston Maspero at Comel Hissen in the western Nile Delta. Later on, some other fragmentary copies were found. In March 2004, while excavating at Bubastis, the German-Egyptian Tel Basta project, archaeologists discovered yet another well-preserved copy of the decree. The inscription touches on subjects such as military campaigns, famine relief, Egyptian religion, and governmental organization in the Ptolemaic Egypt. It mentions of the king's donations to the temples, his support for the Apis and Nevis cults, which enjoyed great success in the Macedonian, Egyptian world, and the return of the divine statues which had been taken or carried off by the Persian conquest of Cabasis II. It also reminds the Egyptians that during the year of low inundation, the Greek government had reduced taxes and imported grain from abroad. It inaugurates the most accurate solar calendar known to the ancient world, with 365 and a quarter days per year. It declares the deceased princess Berenike, or Berenice, a goddess, and creates a cult to her, with women, men, ceremonies, and special bread cakes being made for her. Lastly, it orders the decree to be inscribed in stone or bronze in both hieroglyphs, common language such as Demotic, and Greek, to be publicly displayed in the temples. The scholarly importance of the decree of Canopus lies in its attestation of the existence of the ancient city of Heraklion, which is now submerged and only recently been excavated in the year 2000. The decree informs us in its Greek version that a synod of priest was held in the city of Heraklion during the reign of King Ptolemy I. Translation The translation was done by Samuel Birch. The translation will also include terms for explanations and comprehensive ideas. In the year 9, the seventh month of Apuleius. Side note, Apuleius, a month of the lunar Macedonian year corresponding to the Athenian Memetarian, here being the 17th of March. The 17 Tibi, according to the Egyptians under the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, Ptolemaeus. Side note, Tibi being the first month of the season of Peret. The everlasting, beloved of Ptah, son of Ptolemaeus and Arsinoe, the brother's gods, when the priest of king of Alexander justified. Of the brother gods and the benevolent god was Apollonides, the son of Machion and Menecretai, the daughter of Philemon, was the basket bearer before the queen Arsinoe, the brother loving, on this day followed the decree. Side note, basket bearer. The names of these Epini control the date of the vague year. The Canophorus was the leader of the procession, an important social position. The temple wardens, the prophets, the Hirodulus priests. Side note, Hirodulus, sacred servants. In Greece, this term referred to the temple prostitutes. Priests, all who enter in the sanctuary of the gods to clothe them, the sacred scribes, knowing things, the divine fathers, and the other priests in the rank assembled from Upper and Lower Egypt on the five of the month of Dios. Side note, Dios, another Macedonian month, corresponding to the Athenian, Pionepsian, 3rd or 4th of February. When was celebrated the birthday of His Majesty, and to the 25th day of that month, when His Majesty assumed the dignity from His Father. They assembled in the temple of the benevolent gods, which is in Pekutha, and declared. Side note, benevolent gods being the ruler and his wife. The role of the queen has been enhanced under the Ptolemies. Side note, Pekutha being Canopus. Canopus is a town on the westernmost Canopic branch of the Nile in the Delta. Since King Ptolemaeus, the ever-living, the beloved of Ptah, son of Ptolemaeus and Arsinoe, the sister gods, and the ruler Benerinike, his sister and wife, the benevolent gods have made benefits many and great to the temples of Egypt for all time, since they have ordered very greatly to the gods. 
since they had been taken perpetual care of the things in the glorious Apis and Nevis. Side note. Apis and Nevis, the bull cults, minor under their native rulers, took on an ever-increasing importance in the Hellenistic world. And all animals of the temple which are protected in Egypt, for whom they assigned great things, supplying numerous things. They took care of the statues of the gods, which had been robbed by the barbarians of the land of Persia from the temples of Egypt. Side note. Persia. The ruling Persian king was Cabus II. Since his majesty had won them back in the campaign against the two lands of Asia. Side note. Asia. The city of Sat. He brought them to Egypt and placed them in their places in the temples where they had previously stood. He has kept up peace in Egypt advantageously by warring for its wheel in valleys and plain foreign parts. Side note. He has kept up the peace in Egypt. Civil unrest was widespread throughout Egypt during much of the Ptolemaic period, above all during the reigns of Ptolemy III's successors. Military campaigns abroad did not prevent the natives of revolting. When, moreover, there happened a year of a deficient water of the Nile during their reign. Side note, deficiency of water of the Nile being the low levels of the Nile. Their reign and all inhabitants of Egypt became faint-hearted at this event, for fear memory made them think of the death which once did occur in the time of the former kings in consequence of the deficiency of the Nile to the inhabitants of Egypt in their time. His majesty and his sister and wife had cared in their hearts, which glowed for the inhabitants of the temples of the natives of Egypt in its entire extent, who were very much distressed and bent down. They remitted considerable taxes. Side note, taxes. A large proportion of the taxes was paid in corn, example in wheat or barley. In order to save men's lives and to care for the importation of corn. Side note, importation of corn. The countries on the Levantine coast were known for abundant wheat production, but belonging to a different climate region. Drought there rarely coincided with the crop failure in Egypt. Importations of corn into Egypt from the eastern retinue. Side note, retinue being Syria or northern Palestine, and from the land of Kafatha, side note, Kafatha, Phoenician, from the island of Nabinet, side note, from the island of Cyprus, which lies in the midst of the Great Sea, side note, Great Sea being the Mediterranean, and from many other lands, since they expended much white gold, side note, white gold or silver, for the purchase thereof. They transported the importation of provisions to save those living in the land of Egypt, that these might know their goodness forever and their many virtuous turns whereby both those who are living and their posterity, and for which the gods grant them maintenance of their dignities and rule over upper and lower Egypt in reward. Side note, one of the pharaoh's main duties was to care for his people and keep them fed. Thereof, and the reward of good, and all kinds forever, with blessings in wheel. It came in the hearts of the priests of Egypt. They increased the numerous things for the king Ptolemaeus, the ever-living, the beloved of Ta, and the ruler Berenike, or Berenice, the benevolent gods in the temples, and what things were for the parents, the sister gods, the progenitors, and what was for the savior gods, and have ordered an increase of priests thereof in all temples of Egypt in its full extent, that they should be called priests of the benevolent gods in their name, that they should occupy a higher rank through the name of their office and of their place as prophet thereof, writing their name in all documents. And there shall be incised the title of the prophet and of the benevolent gods in the ring which they wear in their hand, and that they shall form another caste of existing priests who are all in the temples and besides the four castes which exist to this day, it shall be called the fifth caste of the benevolent gods. Side note, a fifth caste is created in order to honor and worship the pharaoh Ptolemaeus and Berenike. Inasmuch as it occurred fortunately with weal and blessing that King Ptolemaeus, the ever-living, beloved of Ta, son of the sister gods, was born on the fifth of the month of Dios. So from this day as it was already a source of much weal to all living, it is granted that the priests who have been placed by the king in the temples from this year of his majesty, and those who have been appointed also up to the month of Mesor of the year 9. Side note, 
Mesor, being the last month of the Egyptian calendar in the season of Shemu, should be counted as of this caste, and so their children forever. But the priests, who had been appointed before the first year, should be in their castes they were before. But also to their children from this day forever are to be inserted in the registers of the castes of their fathers. And instead of every twenty priest counselors who are yearly elected for one year from the four castes being five men from each caste, there shall be nominated twenty-five priests for counselors, as five men are to be added out of the fifth caste of the benevolent gods, is to be given a proportion of number of the fifth caste to the benevolent gods of all dues that arise from the offerings in the temples and of all things under their charge in the temples, and their leader or president shall be of the caste of chief prophet, as is now the case with the four other castes. Inasmuch as was celebrated the festival of the benevolent gods in all temples in each month on the fifth, the ninth, and the twenty-fifth days in the consequence of the decree established before, and similarly as a celebrated panegyri. Side note, panegyri, being the speech or text in praise of somebody. Of the great gods, and a general feast in Egypt is celebrated yearly in its time, shall be similarly prepared a great festival in its time to King Ptolemaeus, the ever-living, the beloved of Ptah, and to Queen Berenike, the benevolent gods in the upper and lower country and throughout Egypt in its entire extent, on the day of the rising of the divine Sothis. Side note, Sothis being the serious dog star, or Sokdet in ancient Egyptian, which is called the new year of his name in the writing of the house of life. At present, it occurs in this ninth year of the first day of Peini. Side note, Peini being the first month of Shemu, the harvesting season, around the month of June, in which month is celebrated the festival of the new year of the goddess of Bast. Side note, the festival of the new year of the goddess of Bast, being called Ubastai. And the great festival of the goddess Bast in this month, and also it is the time for the collection of the fruits and the rise of the Nile. But, as the case will occur, that the rise of Sothis advances to another day in every four years. The day of celebration of this feast shall not pass along, but it shall be celebrated on the first day of Peini, and the feast shall be celebrated as in the ninth year. This festival is to be celebrated for five days, placing wreath of flowers on their head and placing things on the altar and executing the sacrifices and all ceremonies ordered to be done. Side note, five days being the Epigemenes days, these being the five days celebrated as an add-on after 360 days. But that these feast days shall be celebrated in definite seasons, for them to be kept forever and after the plan of the heaven established on this day, and that the case shall not occur, that all of the Egyptian festivals now celebrated in winter shall not be celebrated some time or other in summer, on account of the procession of the rising of the divine Sothis, or Sokdet, by one day in the course of four years, and other festivals celebrated in the summer, in this country, shall not be celebrated in winter, as has occasionally occurred in the times past. Therefore, it shall be that the year of 360 days, and the five days added to their end, so one day of feast of the benevolent gods be from this day after every four years added, Side note, the four years added. This is the beginning of the introduction of the leap day, resulting in a year of 365 and a quarter days. In fact, this new rule was not followed, and the leap year had to be reintroduced under the Emperor Augustus. Four years added to the five epogemene before the new year, whereby all men shall learn that what was little defective in the order as regards to the seasons in the year as also the opinion which are contained in the rules of the learned on the heavenly orbits, are now corrected and improved by the benevolent gods. And since a daughter has been born to King Ptolemaeus, the ever-living beloved of Ta, and to the mistress of both lands, Berenike, the benevolent gods, who was likewise called Berenike and proclaimed as ruler, as it happened that this goddess had already returned unexpectedly to heaven in her virgin state suddenly, 
so have the priests who came from the country to the king, stopping a year in the house of his majesty, ordained a great mourning directly at this event, and came praying to the king and queen, to lay it to their part, and to permit them to place the goddess with the god Osiris in the temple of Fakotha. Side note, Fakotha, being Canopus, which is a sanctuary amongst the temples of the first rank, Inasmuch as it is the most important and is equally honored by king and inhabitants of Egypt in the full extent, the entry of Osiris and the holy bark takes place here yearly at the defined time, at the temple of Akabamara. Side note, Akabamara, being the city of Heraklion, in the month of Choyak. Side note, Choyak, being the last month of Achet, the inundation season, around the month of December. The month of Choyak, the twenty-ninth day, and the inhabitants of the temples of first rank throughout make burnt offering on the altars of the temples of the first rank, right and left, in dromos of the sanctuary. Side note, dromos, avenue of entrance way to the building. And after all ceremonies are usually performed, which they have performed to her as the goddess, they purified themselves from mourning for her, which they had prepared and hollow their hearts by flaming fire, as the custom is from the burial of Apis and Nevis, and they decree causing that there should be uttered an adoration for ever to the glory of Queen Berenike, daughter of the benevolent gods, to be proclaimed in the temples of Egypt in its entire length. As her reunion with the gods occurred in the month of Tibi, in the same month and the same day wherein entered the daughter of Ra into heaven, when he called her, the eye of the sun and the Urius serpent on its front. Side note, he, being Ra, the sun god, by name and out of love to her ordered her feasts and a procession to her celebrated in the chief temples and in the sanctuaries of the first rank in the month, wherein the apotheosis of the goddess originally occurred. So shall be ordered a feast and procession for the queen Berenike, the daughter of the benevolent gods, in the temples of both lands in the extent on the month of Tibi, from the seventeenth day, when happened the procession for her and purification on account of her mourning for the four days. There shall be also erected a statue of the goddess in gold, studded with all precious stones in the temples of the first rank and sanctuary of the second rank throughout, and the site thereof shall be the sanctuary of the temple. A prophet or one of the priests in the selected to be performed a great lustration. Side note, lustrations, purification by ceremonial washing. And the priests who enter the sanctuary of the gods to clothe them may carry it in his hand and on the day of the crowning and feasts of the gods throughout, so that all men adoring it prostrate on the earth may see it prostrate in its honor, and it shall be called the statue of Berenike, the queen of virgins, and the crown to be placed on the head of this statue is not to be the like the crown of the statue of her mother, Queen Berenike, but is to be made of two ears of corn and the urea serpent between them, and a papyrus scepter in their height is behind this urea serpent, just as the scepter is in the hands of the goddesses, and the tail of the urea serpent be entwined around the scepter to announce by this combination the renown and the name of Berenike from its profound meaning in hieroglyphics. And when they are solemnized the days of Kobek, side note, Kobek, being the Kekeli of the Greek version, Kobek back in the month of Choak, before the procession of Osiris, that the virgin daughters and the wives of the priests shall get ready another statue of Berenike, of the queen of virgins, and there shall be made to her a burnt offering and things, as is proper to be done in the days of this feast. Also, other virgins are allowed to show the proper respect to this goddess as they choose, and female singers shall chant and praise to this goddess, who are selected for divine service, and wear the crowns of the gods, being their priestesses. And if an earlier harvest occurs, then shall the priestesses bring ears of corn to the sanctuaries, and place them in the divine statue of this goddess, and chant to her divine figure by a chorus of singing men and women, as happens at the feasts of the panegyric of the gods, in a hymn which the sacred scribes shall have written and given over to the presentor. Side note, presentor, 
being the leader of singers. And the same shall be inscribed in the sacred writings. Also shall be given the provisions to the priests in the temples after they have been installed by the king in the temple. Henceforward, there shall be provisions for priestesses' daughters from their birthdays, from the divine supplies for support accorded by the priests, counselors in the temples throughout the proportion of the divine supplies. And the bread shall be given to the priests' wives. Its preparation shall be stamped as a loaf and be called the bread of Berenike by name. This decree, written by the priests of the counselors in the temple, and by the presidents of the temples of the scribes of the temple, and shall be incised in a stella of stone, or bronze in hieroglyphics, in the writing of the books, side note, writing of the books, also known as the demotic, and the writing of the Greeks, and the stella shall be erected in the great assembly hall, open to all men in the temples, first, second, and third rank so that all may know and honor be given by the priests to the temples of Egypt, to the benevolent gods and their children, as it is appointed to be done. End of translation. If you've enjoyed the translation of the Canopus Decree, please check out my other videos which deal with the translation of the mythological stories of ancient Egypt. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to my page. Thank you.